Good day guys, thanks for watching as always. As the title of the video might suggest, we're making a big popper for GT today. Uh, a pencil popper to be specific. Uh, it's a lure that I haven't made yet, so I figured I might as well get onto it. Um, most uh, well-known pencil popper for GT is probably the Fisherman Long Pen. Uh, there's a couple of other models like Hammerhead Toby. A um, couple of different varieties in terms of uh, cup size, length and design. Uh, but we, as always, uh, wanted to kind of make our own design, so. Uh, I do want to have a decent cut face on this one. I still want it to blue properly. Uh, still be able to work it as a normal popper rather than just straight uh, crank retrieving. Uh, and hopefully with this design we're also able to do a bit of uh, walk the dog action because it's a long design. Uh, longer lures uh, usually lend themselves better for that type of an action. And we'll be rear weighting it. Uh, in the bottom side of the tail. So uh, as per usual, I just make a design on paper, uh, and then we proceed to um, draw it over on the wood. Kind of go from there. It helps out with um, well, either if you're carving or if you're using a bandsaw like myself. Uh, that bandsaw is a great investment, by the way, if you're into lure making. They don't have to be expensive. Uh, mine was only uh, about $120 and uh, it helps tremendously you're able to put out a lot more lures that's for sure uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of copying the outline of the, the uh, lure that I made and uh, I'll be using that as a, um, a back pattern uh, so that I can kind of follow a, a second cut line for the width of the lure now I have to figure out a little bit how to uh, redesign that because uh, the wood that I'm using is not as uh, wide, as it, wide as it is thick or the other way around depending on how you look at it um, and so therefore I did have to chip off a little bit of the design but folding a piece of paper in half will always make it symmetrical so that's uh, that's alright so after a, a bit of uh, figuring out and cutting some excess material off so it would fit the wood uh, we're able to also make a top design and then we can kind of go from there it doesn't have to be super difficult so um, I'll be cutting out the flat side first um, it doesn't really matter because at one point I will be using uh, the cutout lines to level the block of wood anyway you'll see that a little bit later uh, this time I'm using some super glue to, to hold everything together because otherwise you don't have your cutout lines perfectly um, drawn onto the wood that you're cutting out. It might sound a bit difficult but you'll see it in a second. Uh, we're just cutting out um, the outlining of the popper here, so the, the belly and the back essentially. And then later we'll proceed to um, slightly reattach the pieces of wood that we cut off it so that it sits straight on the cutting bench. Here I'm applying some super glue and then we can uh, put the belly and back in place and then it's easy to snap off at the end. It's very important to do this simply because otherwise your cuts wouldn't line up and you'd get a crooked uh, bait. That's not what we want. So being able to cut out the belly, the back and the two sides helps tremendously with cutting off uh, the time of carving it out, obviously. Otherwise uh, it would be much more a difficult process and it's also much easier to um, have a symmetrical design with a bandsaw because you can perfectly follow the lines. So there we have it. That's kind of like the 3D cutout the belly in the back and the two sides and now we can proceed on uh, designing the cup now the front of the face was almost perfectly uh, uh, square but we did have to uh, make a little bit of an adjustment so um, unfortunately the, the bandsaw doesn't do everything but it does help uh, uh, with designing the bait so now all is left to do is cut off the rest So. Having a good sharp knife and quality wood to work with is, uh, is key here. 
Um, if you've got crappy wood quality or just not great of a craft wood, uh, it's going to be very hard to do this. So there's a couple of woods I can recommend. Uh, Polony is probably the best one, but also the most expensive one. Because <laughs> uh, the demand is very high. It's very expensive wood. Uh, here I'm using a, a good quality hardwood. I believe this is uh, Papua New Guinea mahogany. Um, but I might be wrong. Um, either way, it's a good craft wood to use and uh, makes makes uh, working with it a lot easier. It doesn't just splinter off or split. Um, you can carve exactly the lines that you want to carve. There we go, there we got a bit of a rough design there. It's looking alright. So I'd like to do uh, sanding in between carving because then I can kind of perfect the design. But um, yeah, it's looking pretty good now. So once we carved out the body, it's time to um, carve out the cup. Now, I don't use too many power tools other than the bandsaw and the Dremel. That's about it. Uh, but the Dremel helps with a lot of uh, things that I uh, do for the lure making, whether that's drilling or... Uh, carving out a cup like in this scenario um, I've got a little grinder it's not even a perfect grinder it's not even around burr or anything um, so I do have to use it in a very specific way to not have cut lines in there uh, but it helps a lot it makes life pretty easy and um, it only takes about 15 minutes to have a good cup um, also what I learned from um, making diving poppers like the ones in the previous video, uh, is that uh, epoxy does collect a little bit in the cup, and so if you can accommodate in that in the design in the wood with that, that's perfect. So I'm making an extra deep cup so that the epoxy can settle in there and it doesn't really fill up the cup uh, to the extent where it does, where the popper doesn't bloop anymore. Uh, so once that's done, I use 60 grit sandpaper to sort of uh, smooth out the cup. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but uh, we'll get to that. Doing a fair bit of sanding now. If you have a round burr, life would be a lot easier. Um, limits the amount of sanding you have to do and you basically have a perfectly round cap every time. Uh, although that's not always uh, the intent of my designs. Um, but if you go for a standard uh, popper cup design, those run burrs are uh, worth their weight in gold. Might have to invest in one. So we're just uh, sanding the body here since the cup is all smoothed out. Um, depending on the type of wood you use, you do want to make sure that the, the cup has a, a fairly thick lip. Uh, that will prevent chipping. And if you have a, a cup that has a, a, a big chip off it, it might actually um, take away the blooping action of the popper. Uh, the way that we're fitting the wire in this uh, popper is um, by creating a slit in the belly. Uh, it's a little bit tricky since we've already made the cup, but uh, uh, we started uh, the slit already that I just carved in there with a, a box cutter. Uh, and then I proceeded to extend that cut with the bandsaw, which is a nice straight cut. And then we can proceed further with a handsaw or a, just a, a, a box cutter completely uh, continuing to slit through the belly. I'm just using the Dremel here to grind out the last uneven bits in the slit so that the wire can fit perfectly. It's not a great tool to use. Um, for lure making. So here we're making the wire, here we're just making sure everything is aligned properly. Um, you could either uh, weld the wire together. Uh, I'm not a big fan of leaving a long excess on the wire simply because uh, it, actually, it adds to the weight and it's sort of like an uncontrolled balance that you have in the wood. Uh, so you kind of want to minimize that. So um, if you're able to weld it together that's perfect. Um, I fix mine with uh, really really thin wire thread and then um, super glue it all shut. There's, I can't move it uh, once I do that. 
um, so that's a, that's a good sign it's never broken on me um, as you can see here the wire fits very well there's always a little bit of uh, wiggle room um, if it's a bit too short or too long uh, but that's a perfect fit and as you can see the connection eye sits fairly high in the cup uh, that has to do with the design of the popper but we'll get to that a little bit later sweet all right guys so uh, we fixed in the wire we fixed in the weights in the back as well um, for this particular design I didn't want to put too much weight in I didn't want it to sit the tail down all the way uh, simply because we designed this uh, pencil popper a little bit different than what they usually are designed for. Um, the connection eye sits a little bit higher in the cup as well. Um, and the weights are not all the way at the back at the tail. They actually sit in the belly of the tail here. The uh, reason why I've done that is uh, I kind of want to still be able to work it as a normal popper. Uh, because it's got a fair bit of a smaller cup, I wanted to catch a lot more water when I do bloop it. So therefore the connection eye is a fair bit higher, therefore it will catch uh, a fair bit more water and dives down a little bit better too. Um, and on a fast retrieve, uh, that might actually destabilize this lure, therefore I actually have to move the weights to the belly, otherwise it might just roll over or just start spinning. Um, that's kind of like the, the main idea from it. Um, I've made it a little bit lighter so that it's... Um, it skips over the waves better essentially. Uh, I've actually tested it out in the pool just before um, and it's got a, a very consistent amount of water splashing over it which is perfect for what I wanted. So I'm uh, quite happy with the design how it turned out. It is after all the first time I've actually made a pencil popper so uh, quite happy with that. Uh, works a treat and I can even um, work it um, walking the dog style with the rod tip up, giving it short jerks with the rod and uh, it's got a really nice side to side action and it even splashes water uh, then as well from the cup. Perfect. Uh, all we have to do now is uh, smooth out the belly. Obviously it's a fa fairly rough still. Um, we'll give it a first base coat to kind of seal the wood. Uh, and after that we can start painting. Uh, this time I just want to keep it a, a pretty standard uh, popper um, style. We've got some simple 2D eyes here, here for poppers. Um, you know, usually I do a face carving and all that, but you know, just to get people into making a popper for themselves it doesn't have to be all that difficult and you can still with some very simple materials and some very simple techniques you can make a very good looking popper so uh, let's get going alright guys so we finished up sanding the, the belly it's nice and smooth now so the cup uh, is ready for a first um, base coat make sure that the wood becomes uh, well, at least sort of waterproof so that it doesn't soak up any water and it does get damaged. Obviously, we're going to do the epoxy over it as well, but um, it's going to be the base coat. After that, we're going to do a pretty simple uh, paint job. We'll do some foiling to make it look nice, um, but for the rest, we're not going to do anything special. So, yeah, we'll uh, be working on that now. All right, guys. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you are probably going to be very familiar with this uh, scenario here. Um, I love foiling uh, my lures, especially stick baits and poppers. Um, I'm not a really big believer in uh, lure color. I don't think the color itself makes a big difference. However, I do think flash does help to tra uh, attract um, fish to your lure. Um, quite often, those fish can come in from um, quite some distance. And uh, the easier it is to spot from a distance, uh, I think uh, the better might be of a different opinion but yeah I do think uh, flash does help um, so we're just using uh, a piece of cardboard whether that's uh, in this case an uber card or something else that's uh, a straight cardboard line um, to carb scales uh, cut the scales I should say and I like to do a cross cut over the lateral line and then a single cut under the lateral line looks pretty good and so we got two sides ready here uh, I'll fold, uh, fold the tape in half um, so that um, we can cut it out and start foiling the popper. Uh, now the popper has uh, got two thick base coats on and then a red coat over it with some blue on the front. Um, 
I'll be making some more paint adjustments as we go, but uh, it gives a good base coat. So um, here I'm just lining up the pop bar so I can cut out um, the tape, the shape that it needs to be to fit well to the body. Now in contrast to stick baits, pop bars have uh, a lot more curves, uh, so that might make it a little bit more tricky to apply the tape. Um, but we do have... Uh, a couple of things that we can do to uh, aid with that not to be worried so I start from the tail I fix one point on the tail on and then I pull the tape tight or the foil I should say to um, make sure that it aligns well with the rest of the body uh, especially on these longer lures the slightest mistake can make a big difference on where the end of the tape is going to end up so take your time with it uh, now as I said those curves make it difficult to uh, fit it to the lure uh, so we might have to make some incisions uh, to actually get it to fit properly to the body um, I think the neatest way to do this is to um, follow the cuts that you've already made for the scales um, therefore it's not that noticeable um, and if you do a really good job those cuts are not actually noticeable because the tape might overlap in certain areas and it will look pretty flush especially once the paint over the foil is uh, set up uh, you won't really notice it this is just one of those jobs that you have to really take your time for but the end result is usually pretty good A good sharp knife helps with this because otherwise you might actually tear the foil rather than cut it uh, and that will definitely ruin the foil job. <clears throat> also one tip I can give you and I didn't do this in this video is to actually have a towel underneath when you're actually doing the foil job. Uh, if you're done with one side and you continue on with the other um, it's good for the foil to be touching something soft rather than something solid uh, might damage the foil uh, I forgot it this time so uh, do as I say not as I do but yeah it's a good tip um, so we uh, taped off some of the foil and uh, left some spaces out there so we've got a nice uh, stripy pattern going on I literally use two colors here blue and red uh, gives a bit of a purple effect and um, the red transitions quite nicely into the foil so it looks pretty good um, I waited with the face foiling simply because I didn't want to have any additional paint and I want a good outline of the uh, face foiling I do have some uh, cut lines to follow on the face so I know exactly uh, where it needs to be I did leave foil on the face um, so I can trace it over uh, that's going to be pretty good, very helpful. It's just a matter of cutting out a piece of foil that fits well to the face. Um, it's better to use too much than not enough because if it misses one spot you'll have to throw the whole piece of foil away it's going to be messy uh, foil might even take some paint with it in areas where it's going to be exposed and that means they have to repaint it then all the other foil is getting dirty you just don't want that so you want to get a, as clean of a job done as possible here I'm tracing the outlines uh, cutting out the, the gill slits and the gill cover and I did design a little bit of a socket um, for the eyes to fit in uh, as you know, I didn't do any face carving this time. I wanted to keep it a little bit simpler, um, which is good. Uh, but I still had to make sure that I can accommodate uh, the sticker eyes as well. I did have a bit of an idea uh, to cut out some eyelashes. It's a bit of a, I stole the idea from um, Native Works. They make uh, a diving popper called the uh, Napalm Diving Popper. Uh, I've got those eyelashes cut out in the foil. It looks pretty good. So, I don't know, stole their idea to see if it would work on a popper. 
so there you go that's the uh, sockets cut out the gill cover and everything done and now we just have to apply the sticker eyes so these are just really straightforward um, sticker eyes these are printed on a um, vinyl sticker paper I don't recall the name but if you wanna know where to get it um, I can look it up for you I got this design from a friend in Japan um, it's pretty neat but you can make it at home if you want if you've got Adobe Photoshop it's pretty easy to do and it looks pretty good because as far as I know um, just normal sticker eyes for big GT poppers um, I have never been able to find them online so uh, maybe I haven't looked hard enough or in the right place but I haven't been able to find them online so making your own is uh, pretty good and pretty cheap too I always, I always do feel that a good eye design really finishes the lure really makes it look neat so, in this case it's no different Cool, that looks awesome. Makes the lure come alive. I don't know what the fish will think of it. Probably won't think too much, especially since they're sitting on the top, but for the angler it's uh, always nice. So the epoxy is hardened out uh, just enough to uh, show off to the camera. Um, I had some glitter paint left in the spray can that didn't work anymore so I cut the can open and mixed the glitter into the epoxy so I've got a nice uh, glitter coat uh, I'm sure the camera will be able to pick most of that up looks pretty good uh, this is the first epoxy coat there will be a second one um, everything went well except for that there was some air must have been some air trapped under the foil uh, for some reason and there's a bubble sitting right on the edge of where the foil uh, transitions into the paint uh, but since it's only the first coat it's easy enough to sand that off and then since uh, the whole foil and paint part is covered there won't be any more bubbles um, on the second coat so she should be alright um, so yeah pretty happy with the result um, I mean I'm sure it will catch some fish. This type of a lure doesn't need to be very specific. Uh, as long as it bounces over waves, uh, an angry GT will uh, be very likely to hit, hit the lure regardless anyway. But it, it's always nice when it uh, looks good and comes out nice. So, uh, we'll give her a pull test. We'll go to that right now. Alright guys, so not too much to expect from a, a big surface popper other than just a regular uh, big bloops that it makes. Uh, this one does however also uh, have quite a nice walk in the dog action that you'll see in a bit. Um, I do like how it uh, moves through the water. It really is designed to fit heavy um, travels on it too. So uh, the big 70 GT Rex by BKK or the big GT recorders would be perfect hooks for this lure. Which is what I'll be uh, putting on because of it as well. Um, here you can see the walk in the dog action I'm sure they'll be deadly on certain days and uh, yeah it's quite a good lure for rough conditions I'm sure when it's nice and choppy you know really bust through those uh, waves the chop looks pretty good it's quite nice because it actually bloops and splashes uh, on walking the dog action which is what you don't get from uh, a regular walk the dog lure Anyways guys, thanks for watching as always, uh, as per usual, if you've got any questions do please leave them down in the comments, um, thank you for um, keeping in touch with us and watching my videos and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it already, cheers!